Hi, it's Redheaded Riding Hood here, Red for short. I'm going to read you volume two. Today's is on pride. He says, let us think one by one about the seven deadly sins. At the head of the list is pride. Pride is, in a sense, the only sin. Pride is a ground in which all other sins grow and the parent from which all the other sins come. Basically, pride is the exaltation of self. It is the setting of too high a value on oneself. One of the useful things that I have learned from being in the doctor's hands is that no one is indispensable. A man is always in a dangerous condition when he begins to think that the universe is revolving around him. Self-importance is pride. The trouble is that if we allow ourselves to begin to think that we are indispensable in all sorts of things, we can, in the end, render ourselves unable to do the things in which we really are indispensable. A mother is indispensable to her children, but if she gets entangled in all sorts of public things, even church things, and if she begins to think that the outside world cannot get on without her, she may well fail in her duty to her home, that duty in which she is indispensable. I was too involved in church things. I really wish I had. just been more concerned with my own children than everybody else's children honestly to be honest a man may get himself so immersed in outside things that he does not even know his own children and is a stranger even to his own home very often the driving force of our lives is a kind of disguised and concealed pride which makes us subconsciously regard ourselves as indispensable. It is not a bad thing to learn that the world gets on quite well without us. Yeah, so um, we taught in children's church and we taught in Awanas for years and years. And I did also homeschool my children. But as far as teaching in church, and I taught in church with my husband, um, I tried to some um, teach my children also, but my ex-husband, he, he taught those things to other people's kids and he didn't teach them to his own kids. <laughs> so, and I actually think that if I had anything to say to my children as they have their own kids, that they don't need to be so concerned with teaching children the things of God because Jesus said of such is a kingdom of heaven. I mean, I feel like it's good to teach them the Bible and stuff, but I feel like Awanas is is over and there is awanas at the church where i go to now but i don't think i would ever teach in awanas again but um i think it the best thing to do is what my mom said and what my mom did is live by example and not be so concerned with teaching them and I should have put them in I was talking to a young lady at work that's homeschooled and she says you know and she's very mature like a lot of homeschoolers um, and I'm not sure how old she is 
Um, she's probably very young. She might even be like 16. I think she, I think she is 16 as a matter of fact, but she's, um, doing an online school and she is missing the socialization. And I told her, I said, I homeschooled for nine years and, um, some of my children had social anxiety and I shouldn't have homeschooled them that long. Um, the younger ones I did homeschool less years, but um, I homeschooled from 1994 till 2003. <laughs> I told her that, um, so when I put them in school in 2003 is when my younger son met his best friend and, and it's how he ended up here. And one night we were out to eat and we got some drinks and I toasted, I said, here's to mom failing at homeschooling. <laughs> so... Don't say that no one cares for you because I do and God does too. Don't forget to pray for Red because Red is praying for you.